Hey, it's Jason from Lightning Plugins, and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial showing you how you can make cut files for your big heads using my new plugin, Lightning Cut Lines, right here in Photoshop. So stay tuned. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I already have the plugin installed. Once you have it installed, it's going to show up under Plugins, Lightning Cut Lines, right there. And first it'll ask you for your license code, but then it's going to bring up the settings menu, which you can bring up right here. And you're going to want to choose two different things. First is your export format, which if you're a photographer making big head cuts for Signs 365, you want to choose the separate art and cut files. Otherwise, if you're using VersaWorks or something else, you would choose the single PDF mode. But today we're going to be talking about the separate art and cut files mode. And then you're probably going to want to choose simple mode. It just hides a bunch of extra features that you're not going to need for big heads. So simple mode. These colors don't really matter. These are just kind of for preview purposes that you're going to see in a little bit. So you can click OK once you choose those settings. I'm going to very quickly, so this tutorial doesn't go too long, talk through the different settings. Border expand is in inches, and it goes from 0 to 3 inches. You can also type in numbers, including negative numbers here if you wanted. Um, but 0 would make your cut right on the edge of your layer, and 0 0.5 inches would make it 0 0.5 inches out, essentially giving a white border. Um, I should mention all of this works on alpha, so it's not magic. It's not going to do all of the work for you. You do still need to cut out your files and have a nice, good alpha cutout for it to work with. 90% um, of the time, if you get bad cut lines, it's going to be because your alpha has problems or you know isn't nice and smooth. So keep that in mind. Um, you need nice, good cutouts for this to work. Um, because it is just working off the alpha and trying to make the cut lines based upon there. All right, if you do have the border set to zero, you will see the option to generate a bleed. Um, I will just demonstrate that really quickly. I have this layer with alpha selected in the layers panel, and it has made a cut line right on the edge because I have it zero. And then it created this bleed layer. If you look down here in the layers panel, you'll see my original art layer that I had there. You'll see the cut layer, what it made. And it also has this bleed layer, which if you turn this off, it, you can see it looks a little funky. But it's only there for these edges. And it's basically there for when the cut happens, when the mach machine does the cut, sometimes it can be slightly off. And without a bleed there, if it's slightly off, you're going to see a, a big white edge around your cutout, which you don't want. So they recommend you do bleed if you're going to be cutting right to the edge like this, um, just to hide any issues with the, uh, the cut lines. I don't recommend doing it this way because it, it looks great with this guy with a beard. But for instance, if you have somebody with hair what happens then like how could you do a cut line right against this without having like a very jagged edge and all that kind of stuff and you know you're gonna have the white in between so i tend to stick with you know doing a border i do like a 0 0.4 0 0.5 inch border and that tends to give me a lot more leeway to kind of get away with things because um, if I have this one, if I did the same thing on her, this is a much kind of nicer cutout than me trying to do it uh, and having this hair. So I tend to try and do that. I would probably even bring the smoothing and stuff up, which I will talk about now. The smoothing, if I have this to zero... It's not going to do any smoothing, and it's going to try and follow all these nooks and crannies and be very complex, like around her hair and stuff. If I turn it all the way up, 
it's going to smooth things out, but that also sometimes could be bad. This isn't a bad in this case, but for instance, again, you can type in numbers here. If I went crazy and typed 500 in the smoothing, it's going to make this almost like a circle. Yeah, so it makes it a crazy, super smoothed out shape. Um, so for big heads, I do recommend something something between 30 and 60 smoothing path complexity the 0 0.5 would make a gazillion points around here it's like half of a pixel is the uh the threshold for where it starts to try and put points um all the way up to 10 is going to give way less points and give you a smoother shape which is fine for like big heads but if you were doing like a three inch sticker or something you're probably going to need to be down to like one or two almost never 0 0.5 unless it's a very tiny complex object but um, one or two is good for smaller objects but then things like these big heads anything between five to ten six to ten is going to be good um, fill holes I'm going to bring this back down, bring the smoothing back down, and show you these two on her. She's got alpha in her hair. So the hair has got these holes, essentially. So I've turned it down to 0 0.2. So you're going to see that it's trying to cut these out based upon the alpha, which causes it to have these holes. If I choose fill holes, it is going to keep the bigger outer shape, but fill in any of these holes. So it essentially like deletes any of the holes that are in the inside. Now, if you have outlier things, like you see this little guy here, it doesn't fix that but doing the smoothing is going to fix that so there um, and again the border expand and the smoothing would fix that um, you see here she, her hair also has some semi-transparent areas I'm going to use this guy to showcase this a little more though so say I've got, I'm going to put the border expand to zero. And I'm just going to make a cut on him. His hair has got a lot of semi-transparent areas. So you see here the cut line that it created. I'm going to click preview. And this will basically show me just like a, a shape. Those were those colors that you saw in the settings. Just for preview purposes, it shows me the shape of the the cut path that it made but you see a lot of the hair isn't in there because it was semi-transparent so if I click boost alpha and do it again it's gonna try and boost those alpha levels of the semi-transparent stuff and it's gonna include almost all of the hair there and again if I add a little 0.5 border then this guy is pretty good to go except for he's a little too close to the edge I can just select him a good way to select if you have the move tool and you right click it's going to show you whatever layers are below the mouse so if I click here and right click it's going to show me layer one copy two and background are my options and those are the ones that were below the mouse when I clicked if I click here it's gonna show me frizzy art and background so frizzy art is this guy's layer so I can select it and the cut layer is linked so if I have the cut layer selected and move it the art layer moves with it and verse visa which does help me I also see if I click preview again the preview will show me the cutouts that I've made I see this little spot down here, which isn't really visible to the naked eye. 
that there's some alpha there. One trick that I like to do is if I right click, choose blending options, and click stroke, make sure it's set to outside and just give it a little bit of depth, you'll be able to see the alpha because it's basically putting a stroke along all the alpha. And it's very easy then to just take my eraser tool and just paint that away. And then now I've gotten rid of the alpha and I can just throw away the stroke. And now if I recreate this cut, that goes away. And then this guy, I can right click, choose this guy, move him over and create cuts for him. Once you've got your settings dialed in, it's pretty easy to just do each one. Um, and then again, preview, I can see all the ones that I've made. Um, this guides just adds guides so that you can make sure your artwork doesn't get too close to the edge. Um, this set cut is for people that wanted to manually make your own cut lines. So for instance, I haven't done these two yet. So I can select the pen tool or I like the curvature pen tool. And I could come in here and I can, I'm going to quickly do a very bad job of this, but I can draw a path around this guy. And again, doing a very bad job. But just for demonstration purposes, you do want to, before you do what I just did, make sure that you have shape selected. And then it doesn't really matter what you have for fill or stroke, um, but you wanted to make sure shapes was selected so that it actually created a shape layer. If you chose, if you had path selected when you did this, you would draw all those points. It would just make a path in here, but it wouldn't make the shape layer for you. If that does happen with the path selected, if you just go here and you choose solid color, it will then make a shape layer for you. So that's the way to kind of solve that problem if you forgot. But I've created a shape layer. So say this was a beautiful cut that I've made of this head and this is what I wanted. But if I click preview, it doesn't see this. The plugin doesn't know that I actually want that to be a cut file. The way that it's, I can tell it it's a cut file is you can see they're all named with underscore cut. So I need to name it with underscore cut and I can just do that here, make sure it's capital C-U-T, and now I can click preview. Or the fast way to do it is if I just press this set cuts, it says it already does because I just renamed it, but by pressing that button, it would automatically name the shape layer with underscore cut for me. Um, registration dots are something that Signs 365 requires. And just by pressing this button, it's going to make six dots placed around your image. You do want to just double check. Um, normally, you wouldn't have your artwork too close to the edge, so they, they shouldn't be overlapping. But some cases, you could have artwork and a dot might be on top of it, which would be bad. So just make sure you can move these around. It doesn't really matter where they are as long as they're kind of randomly placed throughout your image towards the edge and they're not overlapping any artwork or too close to the edge, you know, within these guides. So feel free to move those around. They're just called reg dot in here. Just make sure when you move them around that you don't um, accidentally like scale them you know, they, they have to stay the size that they are. 
Um, but essentially, once you've done that, you can choose a folder and give this a name and hit export files and it'll take just a few seconds and it will create the files for you and here is a art file that it just made which is a JPEG and it has the registration dots in the artwork but it does not have the cut lines which is correct and then it's got a PDF file which does have all your cut lines you can see I didn't make one for that top head and it's got the registration dots I highly recommend checking out these files before you do an upload um, because it's very easy in here like the preview is good and it can show you what you're about to export but I find that looking at it here in this black and white it makes it much easier to kind of see if I messed up and you know maybe I put things too close together or maybe a registration dot is overlapping over top of something just double check this before you upload but essentially that is the plugin that's what it does I'm gonna make a part two uh, that I'll kind of talk through how to upload the files to Science 365 and how to kind of some of the methods that I use to make cuts and what I recommend doing, which is like a shoulders up cut. Um, but this video is getting long, so I'm going to cut it short and make that a part two. So if you think this plugin is going to help you out, um, then by all means check out lightningplugins.com. I'm still working on the website, but I had a bunch of people ask me about it, so I have went ahead and made the plugin available for purchase there uh, for people that have kind of already seen this video um, and don't need to see the website to tell them what it is. So if you think it's right for you, please check it out, and uh, I hope that it helps you.